One of this director's best is honestly one of my least favorites. This G-rated picture from Alfred Hitchcock was released nationwide in May of 1958, where it grossed 14 million at the box office. The 128-minute psychological thriller was produced on a $2.5 million budget and stars James Stewart in his fourth and final Hitchcock production. Jimmy is, well, serviceable in the lead role. The versatile actor and his English director had developed a close rapport over the years, but I can't help feel like he was miscast here. 25 years older than his young co-star, he's still never quite mature enough for the serious, suicide-focused plot. The narrative follows Stewart as a retired detective suffering from a fear of heights, who investigates the strange behavior of an old friend's wife, becoming obsessed with her in the process. He charges towards its fear by declaring, One final thing I have to do, and then I'll be free of the past. The beautiful Kim Novak is fantastic as his love interest, portraying a figurative dual role, depending on her character's behavior and situation. When she enters a trance-like state and falls into San Francisco Bay, Stewart immediately breaks his cover to rescue her, in a carefully shot and executed sequence. The two are able to sell the realism of individual scenes like this one, but the overarching plot is convoluted and hard to swallow. If I'm mad, well, that would explain it, wouldn't it? Madeline. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I don't want to die. There's someone within me, and she says I must die. Oh, Scotty, don't let me go. I'm here. I've got you. I'm so afraid. Barbara Bel Geddes and Tom Helmore round out the supporting cast with very interesting characters, but they're sadly absent from the final act, with no real resolution provided to their characters. The story is extremely slow-moving, especially early on, but once it does pick up the pace, several twists are introduced to keep things captivating. An almost overbearing score from Bernard Herrmann helps elevate the tension in the more exciting moments, especially during an inventive, half-animated dream sequence that incorporates some haunting visuals. Filmed in high-fidelity VistaVision, the tall 16x9 frame is filled with bright colors, beautiful San Franciscan locations, and sharp framing. The film was also the first to use Hitchcock's famous dolly-in, zoom-out camera technique, now affectionately known as the Vertigo Effect. This simple maneuver is utilized with great effectiveness during pivotal moments in the story to convey Stewart's acrophobia. Hugely influential, this background compression camera move has been implemented in dozens of classics since, including Jaws, Scarface, Apollo 13, and many more. A highly regarded film, including two Oscar nominations, this picture has gained enormous praise in the 60 years since its release, with the American Film Institute ranking it ninth on their 100 Years 100 Movies list. But perhaps I wasn't in the correct state of mind when watching, because I honestly didn't really enjoy it, especially not when compared to Hitchcock's other, arguably more impressive projects. The below-average portrayal from Stewart, coupled with a confusing and perplexing plot and huge stretches with any real tension, made this picture decidedly average. Thankfully, the excellent technical work made it worth watching. Vertigo is a good movie, influential and interesting, but it feels like an unfinished concept. That does it for this individual review, but if you'd like to watch full episodes of Movie Night and submit your own reviews to be included on the show, please visit the Jogwheel YouTube channel. My name is Jonathan Paul. Thanks for watching, and have a good movie night.